Okay. So we had a, a, a project in Lisbon with a, a, a company that manages the parking uh, spots in several uh, spaces. Okay. And they thought, okay, uh, we want to do, uh, we want to count the, the spaces that the cars are occupying. But it would also be interesting in the future if we could detect the license plates that uh, are entering the, the parking lot and exiting. Okay. So this is an extreme example, but it is a complex uh, problem because we have a lot of different uh, license plates and with different characters, different sizes, and different aspect ratios. And the, the initial way of doing license plate detection was, okay, I'm going to measure the aspect ratio of the license plate. I need to know how many characters I want to, de to detect, okay? It might be uh, 9 or 8 or 10, okay? And then I will have to divide the license plate into sections to detect in each section which character it is in there. So it is really hard and the problem is if you change the, the, the country or where you are trying to, to detect and recognize the, the license plate, you would have to adapt your code. Okay? And we tried to do that initially and, and it, was, it wasn't working really well. So we thought, okay, maybe we could use a more modern way of doing this and for that okay we thought of machine learning computer computer vision and of course deep learning so the problem here it can be divided into parts the first one is okay i have a picture i need to know where the license plate is okay so that it is called object detection so we detect all the license plates in the image okay. but i don't know what license plate it is it's only a license plate in there okay here's the detection and then i have to recognize all the characters that made that make that license plate okay. so in this case okay that's the example so our proposed pipeline, uh, yesterday a colleague of mine already spoken about YOLO. YOLO is a framework uh, really fast and really accurate to perform object detection. Okay? We could implement our own, but it might, it could maybe, uh, it could reach the level of YOLO, but maybe not that fast because we are using Python and YOLO was developed in C++, so it's the, the quickest uh, choice in this case. But then, using Keras, which is a framework uh, to, to implement machine learning algorithms and deep learning, we implemented, uh, we use deep learning to recognize the license plate. Okay? So, the problem with, with machine learning is that we always require uh, data to train our algorithms. So, for the license plate detection, Okay. We would require, ideally, between 1,000 and 1,500 images. And the first thing that, that we did was, okay, I'm going to search online if there are some data sets that we can use. But there are a lot of images, but not labeled. Okay. So, sorry. So what we did was we built a web scraper to search images in Google that have a Creative Commons license, so they are free to use. So we gathered a lot of images, and as you can see, some of them are not uh, European, okay? But the amazing part of machine learning is that it has the ability to abstract. So for, for the algorithm, okay, I don't care if that's from Poland or Russian or Germany, okay? It's a license plate. Okay, another example. Uh, we have here uh, a bad example, okay? But since we had a lot, a lot of examples, okay? 
the the algorithm surpasses that that error. Okay. So here's the boring part of machine learning. We had to label all these images, okay? And I have to thank my colleagues that, that did this. In, well, it's really boring. So I don't know if you know what it, what it takes, but what we have to do is, okay, I have to look at each image and then draw this uh, small rectangle that you see above the, on top of the, the object that I wanted to detect, okay? So machine learning is really fun but not on this part, okay? So, we, we labeled all these images, okay? Sorry. And then we, had, we have our, our data set for license plate detection, okay? So, our first part of the pipeline is addressed. Now the second, it's really more difficult, this one. Because here, we, we want to do the the license plate recognition, which, which is, okay, I want to know what are the characters that that license plate contains. And in this case, from what I read from state of the art, normally to perform uh, OCR, okay, which is character uh, recognition, you would ideally require 10,000 images minimum. So we see a tenfold increase for object detection. So this is a much more complex case. So in this case, in our context, we were looking at uh, Portuguese license plates. So it's even harder to, to, to get images uh, of this example and labeled, okay? Because the problem here, okay, maybe I could build also a web scraper that could gather some images of PT license plates, but then I would have to hire someone or pay them to label each license plate and they will, have, they will have to say, okay, this license plate is 10 uh, PA20, for example, okay? So, I thought about this and I, 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 my solution was, okay, I'm going to try and generate my own data set, okay? So, I started making some experiments with, computer, with uh, scripts in Python and computer vision, okay, OpenCV, and what I did was, okay, I went online, I took some pictures of uh, my neighbor's cars, okay, and then I did some Photoshop and deleted the numbers on the license plates, and you can see here the, the spots, okay. Then I searched for the, the font that it is used to create the license plates, okay. But my first, ex my first experiment, I generated the, the data set, I, I did all the training, and then I took some pictures outside and, and I was eager to test this. But the result was terrible, terrible. It, it didn't uh, make one uh, correct uh, prediction. So I looked at the, at the images and then I noticed something. I need to add noise to the images, because the images that, that we take in the real world, they have uh, imperfections, okay? So, I added Gaussian and white noise to the image, and I performed uh, transformations to the image, okay? So, skew the images, rotate a bit, uh, crop the image, okay? So, here is an example, okay, of a generated data set. As you can see, uh, in this, let me see uh, an extreme example, okay, maybe this one, okay. you see that the, the image is tilted, is skewed, okay, and this allows the, the algorithm to learn those imperfections, okay. So, with a script, which I can uh, configure, I can create uh, a data set of 1000, uh, 10,000 or 300 images, okay? It takes a while, but it, it uh, executes and it creates a data set, okay? So, after this, okay, I have all my, my data that I need. What would be the, the architecture that I, I require to do this? So, this is a high-level uh, architecture, okay? So, I will talk uh, for each uh, step of this with more detail, but 
this is the high level architecture. So we use a convolutional neural network to extract features of the image initially. Okay. Then I use a recurrent neural network to divide the image okay, in steps because I want to know, okay, in this first segment, what number is there? Okay. And then, given the steps that I managed to, to create or the segmentations, I use a, a loss function okay, that tries to, to know in which uh, segment, which character or the probability of which character is there. Okay. So this is an activation matrix. I don't know if you can read it, but the idea is that the image is divided in 32 steps and then I have a probability for each character of my uh, alphabet and numbers and then depending on the highest probability uh, it will tell me if it's a 7 or a 9 okay okay so this is the, deta the detailed proposed architecture I don't know if someone here has worked with TensorFlow before or have heard of it okay okay so TensorFlow is a framework developed by Google uh, to where you, that you can use to perform and create uh, algorithms for and use existing algorithms for machine learning. Okay. So this is the same as the previous slide. This is the convolutional neural networks. This is the recurrent neural networks, and this, and this is the CTC. Okay. So. The first uh, part of the architecture, what it does, okay, is takes the image as an input, okay, and then uses CNNs to extract features from an image, okay. What what is what are features from an image? Features is something that for us human beings we abstract that because we can look at, at the license plate and we know uh, instantly which numbers are there, but our brain processes those features internally and understands what they are. And here it's almost the same thing, where the CNN tries to uh, understand what are the differences between two license plates, for example, and what makes one image different from another. Okay. Then we don't sample the layers because here in this example. Uh, in the, in the last years, machine learning has had a lot of booming, but not because of the techniques, but because of the computat computational uh, capabilities. Okay, so most of these methods existed like 30 years ago or 20, but only now we are able to use them in an efficient way. But even now, we have to downsample the image to reduce the size of the, of the network. Okay, this slide for me is very interesting, sorry, because this shows how the computer, okay, sees the images. Because normally machine learning is like a black box and, okay, we feed it the data and the output is what we want. But this is interesting for us to see because each layer has a filter or has multiple filters, okay, in this case the convolutional neural networks. And they try to look at the images like if they have a different uh, set of lenses. Okay? So I'm going to, to see this, the, the same image with a set of lenses, and now this, and now this, and now this. And the goal here is that the features that make this image, they will uh, pop. Okay? They will, in every image which is different, the features for the algorithm they will pop and okay he will know okay here is something interesting and here also because on the on the edges of the image it's always the same it doesn't matter okay for example so this is the first part of the architecture and now the recurrent neural, neural network okay so the convolutional neural ne network what it does is looks at the image in patches and try to learn features from the image here we look at the image as a whole 
but we divided it in segments when we, and we want to learn the sequence of the letters, in this case, in the image. Okay? And here we are using uh, bidirectional RNA, uh, recurrent neural networks, which means that we look at the sequence from the beginning to the end, but we also look uh, to the, uh, the sequence from the end to the beginning. And why is this important? Because, in Port at least in Portugal, we have some rules to create the license plate. Okay? For example, only numbers in the first set, then letters, and then numbers. And what this makes is that the, in this layer, it learns to model that sequence or how that sequence is made. So I initially I made a training where I only uh, had letters in the middle uh, position of the license plate. But then I took a picture of a license plate, a real license plate, where the, the letters were in the last uh, segment of the license plate. And what, what happened was, he recognized the first numbers well, okay? In the middle, he was expecting letters, so for him, he tried to, okay, this is a number, but for me, I only learned that in the middle you only have letters. So he tried to give uh, a prediction of a letter, and in the end, where I had the letters, he predicted numbers, okay? So here, the, once again, the data is really uh, important, and you have to give or create your data set in the most diverse way possible. Okay. So, this will divide the image in segments, okay? and will transform those segments to an array okay? where each array will represent or will have the, the probability of uh, representing a letter or a number, okay? in this case. And finally, CTC. Okay. This, is, uh, this is the final section of the architecture. Okay, and what, is the, what it does is, I don't know if you remember, uh, well, I can show it quickly, okay. Here, if you look at these two segments, what will happen here is that the prediction will be, I have a 7 here, but here also, I have a 7. So what CTC does, okay, it separates the individual characters that it's seen on the sequence, and then remove the repeated characters, and then, this is uh, configurable, okay? Uh, I chose to divide the image in 32 steps, but then I have uh, 37 uh, possibilities, which is all the, the letters of the alphabet, plus the numbers from 0 to 9, and, and a space, okay? And, and these reads, I don't know if, if you can imagine this, but it's like a, a matrix, I don't know which marker I can use, but like a cube, okay, where where you would have uh, 32 segments, okay. I'm not going to make them all, and then I would have uh, 37 layers of depth, okay, and it would be like letter A, B, C, okay, and then it would give me a probability for, for this position. And if this probability in this uh, line is the highest, okay, so maybe the letter that is there is a B, okay? So this is what CTC does. I didn't invent this, okay, any of this. I only used uh, what uh, the frameworks allow us to do, of course, and adapted to our uh, problem. Okay. So, training, okay. I generated a data set with 300,000 images, okay? And uh, it might not look like, but in this case, it is a really big data set, okay? And I divided it. 90% for training, okay? And 10% for validation, which means my uh, model will never see 10% of the images, okay? And then when I want to, tr to test that model to see, okay, has it learned well, I will give him only uh, those images, okay? This one is for learning and this one is for testing. So, we, I have a, a normal laptop, so here it, it's, it's impossible to do this. Uh, we normally need to use uh, computers with powerful GPUs, okay? So, we have 
uh, a tower in Lisbon with a one GPU, okay? But then I talked with Eric about this and he said, oh, yes, we bought a DGX, is in France, maybe you can talk to this guy and he can set you up. So, yeah, I talked with Dorin, okay? And he said, okay, tell me what you need. And what we did was, okay, we, we set up all the, our code in a Docker container. We gave him the Docker container, installed it, and then we have remote access and we have access to the machine. So, this took several days to train, okay? So, I let it uh, on the, maybe on Friday, and then it took almost a week to finish the training. So, but this is also a limitation of chaos, okay? Because when we, when we use our machine, it was slow. And then we thought, yes, we are going to use that machine. Like one hour, the training will be done. No, it took several days, okay? It's a very powerful machine. Yes, it is, it is. Uh, but nevertheless, it has multiple GPUs, it has a lot of um, uh, video RAM, okay, so it's really powerful and it was really uh, cool for us to, to work with that. Okay, the results. These are some uh, graphics that illustrate the results that we, that we had. So, uh, this one is for accuracy and, and this one is for loss, this chart. So, what do you want? You want the accuracy to increase all over time and you want the loss, which is the, the error, to decrease over time. And with the data set that we created, you can see that, of course, for validation, okay, it reaches almost 100% of accuracy and 0% of error. But for the test validation, which were different images that uh, the algorithm never saw, of course, the, the accuracy is, isn't 100% and it never is, okay? This is always probability. So, but nevertheless, maybe, maybe on epoch 10, okay? In each epoch we save the model and in the end we have a, like a, a list of, of models that we could use and we always choose the best one, okay? Okay, so this is all nice, but we want to, to, to get to the good stuff. Okay, so, Remember, these were images okay, okay. generated by a script, okay? So, of course, it might introduce some bias into the system. So, the ideal solution would be, I should have uh, a subset of real images, and then I could augment my data set with some generated images, okay? So, with the images generated by, by our script, if for the validation images, it's, it's perfect almost, okay? You can see here, the, it's similar to that matrix that I was uh, showing there, okay? So these are uh, generated images with random numbers, and you can see, for example, here, here is 66, okay? It doesn't make sense, but it's okay, because another cool part of this is that the, the algorithm abstracts from what it doesn't matter to him. So, for him, these numbers and this part, it doesn't matter. He will only focus on this because it's the part that will change the most during the training, okay? So, another example. As you, you can see, we have a lot of noise in these images and even then, it's capable of uh, performing a correct prediction, okay? And this is all uh, noise added randomly. So I have a set, a set of uh, parameters that I want to add to the images, rotation, noise, whatever, and they are randomly applied to all the images so that I could also have a random distribution of noise. Okay, and how did it work with real images? Okay, okay. Yeah. this is interesting. Okay, so I was having lunch at my uh, grandmother's house and I went for a stroll and okay, I'm going to take some pictures of the cars that are there. And this is an older license plate which doesn't have the year and the month uh, in the license plate. And as you can see, it abstracts from it. It, cor it correctly detects the, the license plate. Okay. So, another case. Okay. These are all the cars of my family. I didn't ask for permission, so... <laughs> 
another one, okay? And as you can see, because the, the problem see here is that we can have images that are taken perfectly in front of the car, but you can have images that are, are taken okay, from the side and you will have a skew of the image. And in the, the, the detection, here is a perfect uh, rectangle, but the image decreases uh, along the, because of the point of view. Okay? So the, the algorithm has to be robust enough to deal with this. Okay, so it works for images, but will it work for videos and moving images? Okay. Okay, it's minimum movement, okay? But nevertheless, depending on the situation that, that you would require this system, for example, uh, the entrance of a parking uh, place, you will have a fixed camera and the car will, will be almost in the same position, okay? But if you have a data set, for example, of cars driving by on a highway that you can train this, you could use this, okay? So, okay. So, when, when I talked with, about this with my friends and colleagues, some of, of them told me, yeah, but that, that already, already exists, so what's, what's the, the big gain of this? Okay, so the big gains of me, for me of this is robustness, okay? So, of course, you need the data, okay? But if you have the data, you can create a really robust system. This is easily scalable, okay? So, we could simply create a new data set for Germany, for France, and we would input... It's, it's just simple, okay, I, I need to create two folders, one with training images and one with testing images. Run, trains, boom, we have a model, okay? And we can use a uh, test transfer learning, which is a really interesting part of machine learning, which is, okay, I have learned something on Portuguese license plates, okay, but I don't have for example, in, in Spain, I don't know if the license plate could be similar to ours, okay? But wh what I do normally is, okay, I go to the last layer of my you know, architecture, I remove that for the Portuguese license plate, but I have all the uh, learning that I did previously. So I add a new layer only for the Spanish license plate, and I can transfer the learning that I did before to the new uh, use case, okay? Of course, there is the limit, always. We have other projects where our big issue uh, is data, okay? For, for example, Alex Nebula, where we try to detect corrosion. Uh, the problem is always the data, okay? And this is easily deployed because, as I said before, I, with Dorian, we gave him a Docker image, okay? He installed it, working, okay? Of course, maybe not at the first time, but we, because we had to version of frameworks and all that stuff, but it's, it's really easy to do that. And this could work on the edge, okay? So you don't need to have a cloud provider to do this. You can simply have a, a computer, maybe a NVIDIA uh, Nano or uh, NVIDIA uh, Xavier, okay? And you could do this. But of course, you can have a system that sends the image to the cloud and and this does all the processing for you. Okay, that was my presentation. Thank you guys, I hope that you enjoyed it.